And by the way, you can keyframe all of that. And keyframes are what's so important to everything that's happening here. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. This is Luma Fusion by Luma Touch. It is the most competent and professional video editing app on the App Store. This new tool has allowed me to create some really awesome videos, like the intro bit in the beginning there. What you're seeing here is the actual project. Not only that, LumaFusion allowed me to make a really awesome music video that I put up not so long ago. It's full of effects and cool edits, and it wouldn't have been possible without LumaFusion. Now, I had a lot of requests from many of you viewers, and I wanna thank you so much for the feedback on whether I should make a series like this or not. So this is the first video in a series of many videos where I will go in depth into creating effects like this blur effect right here. So this first video is just going to be a soft introduction in where I'm showing you the elements that are making up this intro just to spur some inspiration on what you can really do with LumaFusion. As I said, I will later on move into more detailed videos in where I create these actual effects from scratch so you can follow it step by step. Right, so what we got right here are three tracks. One is an audio track, the other one is a picture track, and the third one is a title track. And the way that these effects work is that you put the effects on the individual clips. You don't put the effects on entire tracks. And that's why you can see that I've cut up the clips here and I've got different clips in different lengths with the same thing in it, but I'm using different animations for different effects. And we're gonna start by looking at this effect right here. This is a pixelation effect. And so we're gonna open this clip up. We double tap it and we get into this view. And if you look down here, you can see that we got three main menus. The middle one, we're in it right now, it's the title track. And if we click here, we have the fit and frame menu. And here is where you can resize by pinching and stuff and move around things. You can also rotate it. And by the way, you can keyframe all of that. And keyframes are what's so important to everything that's happening here. It's all about the timing, everyone. And keyframing is how you create transitional states for an effect. Again, looking at this lower menu, when we go in here, here is where we get to the effects menu. In this menu, you can find the kaleidoscope effect and pixelating effect. And as you can see, we've got a pixelate effect right there. So anything you choose will pop up in a list down here. And you open it up by pressing the plus sign right there. And then you get to the actual values that you have for that particular effect. Let's move down here. You can see you've got a little blue dot right there and one there. And these are keyframes that I put in. And so when we go back in the clip, we can see that on this keyframe right there, you can see that it pops up and there's a smaller ring around it now when we go to that keyframe you can see that the scaling value of this pixelation effect is 0.10. And as we move down, when I move this clip, you can see that the scaling is going down. And so when we go to the end of it, the scaling is at zero. And that's actually how this effect is being created. So that's the first effect I used for this intro. If we go out of here, we can see that we've got another effect going on here, and that's the blurring effect. But before we do that, I wanna tell you how I got my logo in here, because this is a text layer. And so I had to add my own font into LumaFusion. Yes, LumaFusion allows you to add your own fonts into the font list. And the way I did that was by going to Safari, googling for my Space BT Bold font that I always use for my Hack Attack logo. I found it in a zip file. And so I used the opening command to download that zipped file into AudioShare. And then I unzipped it in AudioShare and the uh, TTF file that popped up the font file, I used the opening command to send that into LumaFusion. And after that, it pops up in the list. Brilliant. Right, so let's have a look at the blurring effect right here. I'm doing the same thing as I'm doing with the pixelation. Only for the blurring effect, I had to work a lot more on it 
because there's more keyframing going on. With the pixel effect, I just had to put one value at one keyframe and then the lowest value at the second and last keyframe, going from maximum pixel effect down to minimal pixel effect. So let's jump into the effects menu by pressing down here again. And as we can see here, we've got something called swish. And when I open it up, here are the values for it. And you can see the keyframes. Now there's a lot more keyframing going on here. You can see all these blue dots. And when I'm moving slowly through the effect, you can see that there's a lot of things happening. This is basically the same thing as I did with the pixelation effect, only I'm doing smaller or bigger changes between the keyframings and I'm using more keyframes. And as you can see here, when I'm pulling back and forth, it's jumping like crazy at certain points. And when I play it, it looks like that and it looks pretty cool. Now, before I jump into the background and show you how that's being animated, because it actually is, it's flickering and there's lots of stuff going on. I wanna point out this. Here is where you find the undo and redo options. If you do any mistakes or if you wanna redo something you just undid, then you've got these options up here. And this is inside the clip view, by the way. When you go out of the clip view, you can find them down here in this corner. And you can, of course, change the layout of your project project to display what you just want to display at the moment. Okay, so let's go into the background. But first, I'm going to delete this layer. And we have the delete button right there. So let's delete this layer. And we go into this layer. So what you see here is just my normal regular background. But there's a lot of flickering and stuff going on in here. And when we look down here now, we only have two menus. That's because this is a picture layer. So let's go into the effect section. And here we can see that we've got two effects chosen. And if I open up the first one, we can see it's called Overjoyed. And if we look down here, we can see we have no keyframes. And that's because the Overjoyed effect is what's creating this little inverted vignette type thing here like a solar glare coming in from the side of the camera lens and I didn't want that animated but if we go into this layer right here it's called anti-green but it's basically just an original effect inside the color option menu that has been set to an anti-green state and I have then later on changed it so it's not an anti-green filter anymore it's actually more of a make everything red filter and here you can see loads of keyframes you can actually animate more than just one value at a time. And so when I move through the clip, you can see that I'm animating a lot, a lot, a lot of values here. They're bouncing around and that's how I'm creating this effect. So I'm messing with the brightness and that's why there's a light on it flickering. And I'm messing with the contrast and I'm messing with the red color and also a bit with the blue here. So what happens if I turn off this effect? Well, turn off the visibility of it. You see, you have an eye there. If I turn this off, you can see that this is my regular hack attack gray background and I thought that this was boring I actually had the intro playing with the animated pixelated font over it and just the gray background but I just felt that I wanted to make it more interesting and so I did and you can see that it's a very cool combination and so that's how I made this animated intro part next I'll just show you real quickly what's making up the music I'm using for it And for that, we have to travel into Cubasis. Here we have the music playing in the background of that intro bit. It's just four tracks with Poison 202 loaded as audio units. And the sounds I'm using can be found inside those 100 sounds that I gave away not so long ago. Jim Pavlov made sure to put them inside Poison 202 and so they're available for free. And all you have to do is to update Poison 202 to the latest versions and you'll have access to all of those 100 presets I made. Now, I am using my own presets, but I have tweaked some of the presets a little bit just to change them into something that would fit my intro better. So first up, we have the crystal sound. Next, I'm using the wassail sound. Then we have the descent sound.
And lastly, we have that heartbeat sound that I made. It's something very similar to what I made for my Nebula Rasa track with Figure. And it's basically just one of my bass drums that I've muffled off a bit. Now, when looking inside the first sound here, the crystal sound, we can see that I've got some effects in here. And what I've basically done is I've dipped a bit of the frequencies I didn't like in that sound, just to make it sound more smooth and mellowy. I also used a compressor, I always do, just to keep levels in check. If we look at the Wassel sound, I've just removed the bass and frequency around 500 hertz I didn't like, and then I put a compressor on it. If we look at the descent sound, I didn't put an equalizer on it. All I did was keep the volume in check. I wanted that to be more like, well, almost eagle-like. It doesn't sound like an eagle, I know. I think you might get what I'm trying to go for. If, if not, then that that's okay. And then when we look at the bass drum, I have filtered off everything in the top layer down to 500 hertz. A bit of the absolute lowest. I just wanted that peak around 90 hertz to push through. So you get that muffled kind of heartbeaty sound. Now for the wassail and descent sounds, I am using a send effect and it's a reverb. It's Cubase's own reverb. And I made sure that it was very very wet with no pre-delay and I'm also dampening the reverb tail quite a bit just to make a wet background sounds from the hawk like ish thing ah oh, making this sound weird and if we go to the mixer section we can see that on the master stereo out I put an equalizer and here I'm just dipping slightly around 200 hertz and so that's how I made the background music for my animated intro so after all that work what I'm left with is a nine second video it's just nine seconds long and it probably took me about eight hours to make And so there you go. Stay tuned for more detailed videos on how to create elements like this from scratch. Thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. I've also got a Patreon page. So if you want to support creativity and good content here on YouTube, then why not join up on Patreon? Now, if that isn't your cup of tea, then you can always share my videos, press the thumbs up and... Well, you could subscribe if you haven't already. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.